Angry Birds Epic, but it's a Nuzlocke. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, if you don't know what a Nuzlocke is, allow me to explain. Nuzlocke's are a type of challenge commonly done in the Pokemon series, and pretty much when a Pokemon dies, you can't use them again. This forces you to be careful whenever you enter any battle or area. Well, that same logic applies to Angry Birds Epic, except instead of Pokemon, it's classes. If you die, you can't use the class you equipped when entering the battle, and to prevent cheating, you cannot leave battles midway through. As a final addition to this challenge, no potions are allowed. This means that we are required to be cautious whenever entering a battle, and every victory is guaranteed through skill. Will I be able to defeat this perilous challenge, or will I perish part way through? Watch the rest of the video to find out, and as always, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy this video. You all know the drill. With that being said, let's get started with the challenge. As always, the start of the game is nothing to be concerned about, so you might as well speedrun it. Test out Red, unlock Chuck, battle up the Cobalt Plateaus, and encounter the first castle. In the first castle, we're required to use our first and only potion of the playthrough, but since we're forced to do it, it doesn't really count towards failing the challenge. Anyways, we defeat Prince Porky on the next stage, even when reaching a low amount of health near the end of the battle, and just like that, we have the first egg. Right after, we enter a class shop, and the game prompts us to unlock the Guardian outfit, giving Red another class to use. We also buy the Lightning Bird for Chuck and continue on. Either way, classes don't really matter at this point, as the next few battles are some of the most RNG dependent in the entire game, as we physically don't have any source of healing. This means that surviving these battles is complete luck, and we almost lose all of our health on several occasions. Luckily, this doesn't stay the same for long, as the Monty fight begins, in which we absolutely need the Lightning Bird to dispel his dodge effects. We can quickly dispose of him, and right after we unlock Matilda. Matilda finally gives us a consistent source of healing for our team, and now we have three birds we can bring into battle. The next few encounters in the Golden Plains go well due to this, and eventually we can catch up to Prince Porky, who tries to escape in his airship but fails. Right after, an ally arrives. Bomb arrives in his pirate ship to help us out, but it's raided by pirates. After defeating all the enemies in the next battle, Bomb gets control of his ship, and just like that we now have four birds unlocked. We then hunt down the pirate captain to get the steering wheel of the ship, in which Chuck and Bomb both almost die due to the poison effects. However, we can still achieve a victory, and soon after we can travel on the seas. Throughout the next few battles, I use Red's Guardian, Matilda's Cleric, and Bomb's Pirate. Although I do get close to dying a couple times due to the Rogue's targeting abilities, we can progress rather quickly, eventually reaching the next class shop. Although both classes are incredibly useful, we decide to buy the Samurai for Red first, as he is pretty useful for the upcoming Boar Pirate fight. Using the Cleric's Healing Shield and the Samurai's regular shield, we can negate most of the damage or foe deals. They're charging up the Rage Chili, we unleash it on the board, defeating him in a swift move. Soon after, we catch up to Prince Porky, who locks the only entrance in the desert. Luckily for us, the Blues come in clutch and steal the key for themselves, leaving the flock and Porky's fleet on a chase. Eventually, we can catch up to him and start a fight with Prince Porky's troops. The battle does go well at first, but as always, it's a Nuzlocke, so things can't always stay on track. Matilda's healing, although useful, can only get us so far, and eventually we do lose Chuck's mage. As our first loss of the challenge, getting rid of the mage isn't too bad for us, although now we only have the lightning bird left for Chuck to use. Anyways, we can eventually avenge the mage and defeat Prince Porky, getting us the yellow key and blue's tricksters, but finally unlocking all five birds of the game. The desert is pretty easy to handle, and eventually we can unlock the second castle. In a nutshell, the boss fight is exactly the same as the first castle. We fight Prince Porky, who is boosted by Whizpig, and as usual, he's an absolute cakewalk. We don't lose any classes from the five-way battle, and just like that, we can obtain the second egg. Whizpig takes matters into his own hands and retreats to Starfish Reef, and just like that, we can continue our journey onwards. Starting the trek to Whizpig's castle, we locate another class shop. To make up for the loss of Chuck's mage, I buy the Rainbird, alongside upgrading some of his items. Although we do spend most of our Snellings on resources, we can buff him by a decent bit. From testing him out on the next stage, I can confidently say that the Rainbird is pretty amazing, as it gives Chuck options for both attacking enemies and healing the flock. We can take out all the Pygmies pretty easily, eventually reaching the next major roadblock in our journey soon after. Whizpig decides to block one path with his signature blue gates, while spawning in an undead miniboss to guard the other pathway. We are then forced to enter the first miniboss battle of the Slingshot Woods, Flat Stanley. We enter the battle with Red's Knight, alongside the Rainbird and Cleric. For this battle, we'll need as much shields and healing as possible, as Stanley's DPS is absolutely insane. The main plan is to force Stanley to attack Red, while using almost every one of Chuck and Matilda's turns to heal Red back up to maximum health. 
The battle lasts for a very long time due to Stanley's healing abilities, which doesn't help us at all. Our healing is very slightly less than the amount of damage that the Mii boss deals, which means as the battle lasts for longer, we get closer and closer to dying. And yeah, that's what eventually happens. Right before the battle ends, Red's Knight gets knocked out, adding another hat to the list of fallen classes. After being Stanley, we continue on through the forest, fighting more pygmies and foes with the wilding ability. Instead of using Red's Knight, we instead employ the use of his Samurai, which works equally as well to defeat all the enemy pigs. We quickly rack up Snellings, which are all spent to buy the rogues for the blues, allowing us to continue on to the next mini-boss, the Witch. For the Witch boss fight, I would usually use the Mage and Knight as they're a pretty powerful combo, but unluckily for me, those are literally the only two classes that have lost. So, I decided to enter the battle with Red's Guardian, Matilda's Cleric, and the Blues Rogues. Combined, they can pack a punch, heal a decent amount, and counter against the Witch's multi-hits and healing abilities. And using the strategy, we can get rid of the second mini-boss in our path, continuing right on to the next of Wispig's Trials. That's right, Wispig himself has returned to place yet another blue gate, and this time he spawned in a ghost mini boss, the Howler. He flies back into his castle, leaving us to deal with the powerful ghost, which he decided to defeat using the Rainbird Cleric and Rogues. At this point, we have reached Starfish Reef, ready to crumble the next castle of the game. However, Wispig doesn't have this in mind, and decides to place yet another blue gate, forcing the flock to make it around the reef to reach the castle. During our expedition, we fight multiple waves of ghosts and undead pigs, which are all wiped out pretty quickly by Chuck's Rainbird. We also soon unlock the ability to enhance items, which uses Snoutlings and resources to upgrade our current weapons and shields. However, since we barely use this during the run, it's not really that important, so we might as well skip ahead to the point where we reach the other entrance. Expectedly, Wispig places another blue gate, but he runs out of luck, as it makes his previous gate disappear, allowing us to reach him, finally starting the fight for the third egg. As an all pattern goes, the first few phases of the battle are easy. We fight some ghost pigs which are wiped out thanks to Chuck's Rainbird, only to come face to face with Whiz Pig himself. For the third castle, he just has a simple black storm attack, which deals tons of damage to us and heals himself for the damage dealt. We primarily use the Rainbird and Cleric to heal, while using the blues to clear sass effects and pack the greatest punch in the flock. Oddly enough, this battle was tougher than what it was when I tried to beat the game with two birds, as now Wispig had the full three birds worth of healing compared to two. I also did almost die multiple times throughout the fight due to Wispig's damage output, although thanks to the Rainbird and Cleric's healing I could rejuvenate the flock relatively quickly, allowing us to dish out damage almost every turn. Eventually, we are finally able to defeat Wispig, getting the third egg. Wispig quickly retreats in the fourth castle in the icy mountains, but in the process drops a blue key, allowing us to keep on its tail by entering the bamboo forest. We enter the bamboo forest to be immediately trolled by the ninjas. They place a fake egg on our path and we fall for the bait. Except for the blues and Matilda, the entire flock is captured and placed in cages, and suddenly it's up to the two remaining birds to try and save the rest of the group. To prepare for the rescue, I upgrade the blue shield and right after try and upgrade Matilda's weapon, only to be prevented from doing so. For some reason, you can buy the blueprint for the comb in the bamboo forest, but the game doesn't allow you to buy the ingots to craft it, which is kinda confusing, but whatever. We instead decide to upgrade Matilda using the blueprint of a weaker weapon, and engage the ninjas in a battle. With her upgraded stats, we can wipe out all the enemy ninjas within a few turns using the druid and rogues, and soon after we catch up to Bomb, who escapes from his cage, putting us back to 3 birds out of 5. Like all our other allies, we decide to upgrade Bomb's shield, giving an extra whopping 350 health. Needless to say, the next few battles go extremely well for us, and right after we unlock Chuck, who oddly enough escapes from a wooden cage for the second time in this playthrough. Anyways, for the next battle we decided to use him, as his abilities of hitting every pig on field work well for the situation we find ourselves in, and just like that we can progress all the way to the cliff, right about to save Red. However, Prince Porky returns out of nowhere with a now repaired blimp, enlists Red away, and starts to taunt us by occasionally drowning Red. I never really noticed that in previous runs, but wow that is dark for an Angry Birds game. Luckily for us, Professor Pig comes in clutch as usual, and gives us the recipe to create our own airship to get Red back. We just have to collect all the parts from different sections throughout the map, and once we do, we can catch up to Prince Porky and collect the cage red from his grasp. Porky retreats into the fourth castle in the mountains, and just like that we finally have all five birds back together. We fight our way through the mountains, trying to get closer and closer to the fourth castle. Encountering some ice knights, we employ the use of the tricksters to dispel their shields, and with a few turns we can take them all out easily. And soon after, we reach the fourth stronghold of the game, prepared and ready to get the fourth egg back from Prince Porky and Whizpig. For the fourth castle, we decide to use the Guardian, Rainbird, and Druid, 
We decided to use the Guardians of the Samurai to reserve our important classes for later in the challenge, but caution isn't too necessary for now as the first four phases are defeated pretty quickly, even giving our birds time to recharge our abilities right before the final wave. And when the final wave begins, we are prepared to face off against them. Whizpig and Prince Porky are a formidable combination, but the Rainbird can dispose all the bombs that spawn, while the Druid can handle all the healing that we need for the challenge. That leaves Red to attack our foes, and with this method we can take out Porky within a few turns, only leaving Whizpig left. However, he is, quite obviously, the most difficult part of the entire battle. Again, he's almost exactly the same as the third castle with a modified secondary ability that doesn't really affect us. The main issue is dealing with his healing, as it really puts us at a major disadvantage whenever he attacks us. Luckily for us though, we can eventually take him out after a few long minutes of gameplay, and just like that we have the fourth egg. Overall, the easiest section of the game by far, we didn't even lose any classes. Anyways, Prince Porky and Whizpig work together and make their way to King Pig's castle with the final egg, and now the flock has to travel to the one and only Pig City. Making our way down the icy mountains, we encounter a shaman who blocks our birds from getting healing. This is extremely inconvenient for us, and puts the pirate and druid on critical condition. However, we can defeat the shaman a few turns later, leaving only a blizzard pig left and some ice pygmies, who we can all beat easily within the next few turns. Right after, we enter the Pumpkin Plateau, where we use Chuck's Lightning Bird to dispose of the Necromancer Pig and his zombie allies. Although our birds are put in critical condition again by the end of the battle, we can pass it. And following that, we can meet up with the Mighty Eagle, who gives us a standard sword quest. Very cool, Mighty Eagle, but we aren't doing that for a long time. And that's because the Royal Bodyguard stands in our way from entering Pig City. We enter the battle with the Rogues, Druid, and Guardian. This is mainly just so that we can get lots of ship damage over time from the Blues and Matilda status effects, alongside the Guardian's 4 turn shield, which helps us to stay on the offense. And yeah, we really need to stay on the offensive, as the Royal Bodyguard gets an insane amount of healing from the damage he deals, even rivaling Whizpig. With that being said, we do get close to dying a couple times, but thanks to Red Shields and Matilda's healing, we can survive just enough to whittle down the mini-boss's health, eventually taking him down. Unfortunately, while we were distracted, King Pig and Prince Porky fortified all the entrances to Pig City, preventing us from entering not only by land, but by air as well. That means we have to go around via the sea, which doesn't work as well due to the landmines or sea mines around the city, which means we have to get to Pig City another way. And that way is through the submarine, which we can unlock through stealing it from the submariner in the northern sea. We can do this by entering through the moorlands in the Ford North area in the map, where you primarily fight boars. Now, they deal a lot of damage, and who they attack is completely out of my control, so when both enemies decided to attack Matilda, I was kinda done for. Even if I took one of them out, the other would have dealt enough damage to one-shot the druid anyways. So, I accepted my fate a turn later, and watched as Matilda's druid died right in front of my eyes, finally losing another class after all this time. Spoiler for the battle, we did win it. But still, losing the Druid was kind of insane for me, as it was Matilda's best class for healing by far for this stage of the game. Continuing on, I decided to stick with the Cleric for Matilda's choice of class, and quickly progressed to the Marshlands, where honestly her healing shield held up pretty well against the enemies we faced off against. After defeating all the pigs on that stage, we decided to upgrade Chuck's shield again, as we hadn't for a long time, and right after we caught up to the Submariner, who hopped into the ocean but unluckily bumped into the side of a cliff, allowing us to engage him in battle. The battle wasn't too difficult, even with the Submariner's status effects, he couldn't deal more than half our bird's HP at a time, which we could easily recover using the Cleric and Lightning Bird's secondary ability, which pretty much gave the Cleric an extra turn to heal our birds. After defeating the boss, we finally unlocked the Submarine, and now we can make our way to Pig City, getting closer and closer to obtaining the final egg. Starting the final push to the 5th castle, we encountered some underwater bombs alongside some random pigs. Now, Based on previous battles with Prince Porky and the Submariner, I wasn't really expecting them to deal that much damage, and even then, to be safe, I activated the Cleric's Healing Shield just in case anything happened. Well, something happened. I don't know what it is with the bombs in this area, but they dealt so much damage to us, even with the Healing Shield, that it managed to knock out the Pirate, meaning we lost another class within a 2 minute time span. Well, we eventually did manage to knock out the rest of the enemies soon after, finally reaching Pig City even with our drawbacks. Prince Porky then noticed our progression, and ordered all troops to fortify the only path to the city. Technically, if they were all on this path, we could theoretically backtrack to the other route to the city, since I assume it would be unguarded, but hey, it's an Angry Birds game. The plot isn't the main show here. We begin the body bar battle with the Guardian, Lightning Bird, and Cleric, all classes that I've had in my arsenal for a very long time. The battle itself wasn't difficult at all, even when using the more basic classes of the game, and right after, we can make our way to the Prince Porky fight. 
However, before we could begin, I decided to buy the Cannoneer for Balm using some of the stout wings I racked up over time, just so we could use him again for his redemption arc. And a redemption arc he got. Entering the battle with the Rainbird and Cannoneer, Balm's counter came in super handy, especially when combined with the Rogue's targeting ability. Not to mention, his attack was a multi-hit, which meant it was super useful against Prince Porky, who had a damage cap. Using all of his abilities, we managed to defeat Prince Porky, continuing on to the last battle before the fifth castle, Wizpig. We entered the battle with the Samurai, Rainbird, and Cleric. This was my biggest mistake, as both enemies had Thorns attacks, and I didn't have a single bird that could dispel their effects. This pretty much made the entire battle way more difficult than it had any right being, as now I had to time all my attacks so that I could still deal enough damage to outlast Wizpig's healing alongside making sure I couldn't die from his or the Cactus Pig's DPS. Luckily, we could take out the Cactus Pig, and we could then focus all our efforts on Wispig himself, who wasn't too much of a threat considering the shields and healing we had. After defeating him within the next few turns, King Pig's castle was finally unguarded, and we could now enter the fifth castle of the game. However, since this is a Nuzlocke, I wanted to be extra careful when entering the castle, as we would really only get one chance with our best roster. So I decided to spend a couple of my lucky coins and items from the Golden Pig Machine, and I got super lucky. From 30 coins, I somehow got not one, but two set items, alongside some pretty good regular loot for the rest of the flock. And finally, then I could enter the fifth castle, the stronghold of the final egg. We enter the battle with the Samurai, Rainbird, and Cleric. It gives me a good amount of healing, an amazing shield ability, and opens up viable options to deal with every subtype of pig in the game. Undead, dodge, ironclad, the list goes on. Now, as the usual pattern goes, the first few phases go by with a breeze. In the fourth phase, the bodyguard does pose a bit of a threat, but after we take him out, we can mainly spend the rest of the wave charging up a rage chili and setting us up for the final wave of the castle. And for the final challenge of Pig City, we fight Porky, Wizpig, and King Pig himself. As usual, the Rainbird eliminates the threat of bombs, while the Samurai and Cleric are useful for their shields and healing respectively. Every challenge, I try and target a different pig first, and for this challenge we decide to go for the most difficult path of them all, defeating Wizpig first. Now I know that may not seem like a good idea, he's the only pig that has healing, but at the same time he deals an insane amount of damage. If we went for another pig first, Wizpig would most likely become unstoppable and will down our health. Not to mention, his damage reduction attack is super annoying against us, and since we didn't have the tricksters, we kinda need to go for him first. Anyways, thanks to critical hits, we can take him down really, really quickly, only leaving King Pig and Prince Porky left. We decide to target King Pig for honestly no reason. Preferably, we should be leaving him for last, but oh well. Chuck's rage ability helps us out a lot, and combining it with the Samurai's critical hits, we can defeat King Pig easily as well, leaving only Porky left. As this is the final time we fight him in the game, it makes sense he has the most overpowered bombs at his disposal, but that isn't enough to help him. The Samurai's multi-hits and Rainbird's poison are a perfect counter against his damage cap, and just like that we can defeat Prince Porky, beating the final castle of the game. But as expected from the length of this video, that's not the end. Wizpig steals not only the fifth egg, but King Pig's crown also, and retreats into his own manufactured castle at the top of Hoghead Mountain. After fortifying this fortress with five mini-bosses, the odds are placed against the flock, and suddenly it's up to us to make our way to Wispix Castle for the finale of Angry Birds Epic. Starting the journey to the top of Hoghead Mountain, the game rewards us by facing against a single Snoutling Pig on the next level. Although I am aware that you can use this stage to grind your bird level all the way to 100, it would make the challenge way less fun if I did so. So for the sake of content, I beat the pig once and continued on. At the same time though, we did get a nice chest giving us a decent amount of snoutlings and class mastery for the flock. Soon after, I reached the first phase of Wiz Pig Shield, pitting us against the Inferno Pig. Since we really had three birds with no major restrictions, the battle wasn't that difficult. We used the Samurai Druid and Tricksters, which allowed me to remove the mini-boss's status effects while still getting a decent amount of healing and shields. We never even got close to dying, and after a few turns we could defeat the boss easily, destroying the first part of Wizpig's shield. On to the second mini-boss, we fight the Tempest Pig, who is pretty much the same as the Inferno Pig but with the Shock Shield ability. However, that doesn't really affect me thanks to the Tricksters, and suddenly the battle becomes way easier. Even though the Tempest Pig dealt a little more damage than the Inferno Pig, it still wasn't enough to knock out any of our birds, and just like that we could eliminate him with ease, getting rid of the second part of Wizpig's shield. The Earthblood Pig is next, and primarily focuses on status effects. His attack sacrifices damage for an attack reduction effect on our birds, and his secondary ability gives himself HP over time. Thanks to the Tricksters, this boss was the easiest of the entire bunch, and we could quickly defeat him, leaving only two mini-bosses to go. 
The fourth boss was the Blizzard Pig, who focuses on the specific status effect of blocking a Rage Chili ability. As a bonus, he also only has offensive abilities, which means healing is a little more important for this battle than the others. Red's Guardian gives us a shield that lasts for four turns, allowing us to combine it with Matilda's healing shield to withstand his attacks. Again, with three birds, all these battles aren't difficult at all, and we can quickly beat him, leaving only one section of Wiz Pig Shield to go. For the final section of Wiz Pig Shield, we encounter the most unique of the mini-bosses, the Necromancer Pig. He doesn't deal that much damage, but he does spawn in ghosts every three turns, meaning damage is super important so that the battle can't last for too long. We enter with Bomb's Cannoneer and Chuck's Rainbird, and this strategy works, allowing us to defeat him by the time he spawns in his third ghost. And just like that, we have finally gotten rid of Wispig's shield, allowing us to enter the final castle of the entire game. However, we need to prepare as much as possible. The Blue's Tricksters are necessary for this battle, so you really only have one shot to beat the game. So, I decided to go through the Old Nest Barrows to complete the Mighty Eagle's quest, just for that little bit of extra damage and health that we'll need for the battle. At first, the journey isn't too bad, but eventually we run into Piggy Anna Jones. His counter sucks, and since we have the Rainbird and Rogues, the battle becomes way more difficult than it would normally be. At this point, none of the birds I use are really that important, so I decided to fully go on the offense, even though it could lead to the loss of multiple classes. And yeah, I do lose the Rogues. It doesn't really bother me since the tricksters are way more necessary, but still, that marks another class lost. And with that, we now have one class lost for every bird. Anyways, we beat the battle and continue on to the battle against the sword spirit. Since we don't have the knight and I don't want to risk the tricksters, I decided to enter the battle with red samurai instead. Since we can only use one bird, the battle tactic is as simple as it can be. Be on the offense, except when the spirit has charged up his attack. The tactic does work, and even though we almost die near the end of the battle, we can defeat the spirit, completing the Mighty Eagle's quest and locking the Master Dojo. After spending all my Snoutlings and classes, I decided to spend the rest of my lucky coins in the Golden Pig Machine. I know, I've done this in every other challenge on my channel, but here's the thing, it works really well to power up the flock. And as predicted, we do get a few nice set items and upgrades for every bird, finally preparing us for Wiz Pig's Castle, the stronghold of the final egg. We enter the battle with Red Samurai, Matilda's Cleric, and the Blue's Tricksters. They're one of the best combos I have in my roster, giving me a powerful shield for all my allies, a good chunk of healing potential, and a cleansing effect that even boosts my damage for 3 turns. Our main strategy is what it always is. Use Red to attack, Matilda to heal, and the Blue's to cleanse every bird of status effects. We absolutely need the Blue's for this battle due to Wispig's abilities, which are way different than the other times we faced off against him. For this battle, Wispig relies on his zombie allies to deal the most damage, but he also has a crazy attack that dishes an overpowered status effects to our birds. For those who are wondering, it insta-heals all allies who attack us to max HP, which is why the Blue's Tricksters are needed to beat this battle. The beginning of the battle isn't too bad, but things start going downhill quickly. We face a similar problem we had all the way back when we lost the mage. We don't have enough healing to make up for all the damage that we were taking. The tricksters, which are my most important class for this battle by far, are left below 50 HP throughout the battle. If they are to be knocked out, the run would be as good as over, as no other ally would be able to cleanse status effects from all three birds at once. This means that playing defensively is my only option, and from there I use almost all of Red's turns to shield the blues, preventing them from dying. After a few more turns of stress, Matilda can finally use her rage ability, putting the blues back up to a sizable amount of HP. Even then, I still use Red to shield the blues for the rest of the wave, as there is absolutely no way I would risk the run like that again. Even though it takes a long time to whittle down Blue's Pig's health, playing defensively does work, and eventually we can finally defeat him, killing the rest of his allies during the process. But, there's still one wave left. How can this be? Well, Wispig is back, and more powerful than ever. As Prince Porky arrives in the nick of time to help the flock out, Wispig turns into demonic Wispig, posing a greater threat than ever before. With the entire flock on critical condition and no way to prepare, it's now or never to finally beat the Nuzlocke. I'm sure that most people have seen this battle before, but for those who haven't, here's a small tidbit. Demonic Wispig is extremely powerful, and he also has an Absorb ability that heals himself for 2000 health for each ghost that spawns. This means that Prince Porky is needed for this battle for his Rage Chili ability, which takes out every ghost on the battlefield permanently. For now, however, we still primarily use our turns to shield ourselves, heal up, and brace for the impact of Demonic Wispig's Black Storm. Oddly enough, when it does arrive the next turn, it doesn't deal that much damage. Due to the Samurai Shield and Matilda's Healing Shield, we can negate most of the damage that he deals, leaving us at a major advantage. 
We spend the next two turns whittling down Wispig's health, while he slowly but surely charges up his finishing blow. Right before he unleashes his second Black Storm attack, we finally charge up our Rage Jelly. We use it on Prince Porky, and we deal the finishing blow to Demonic Wispig, finally beating the game. And with that, we have completed the Angry Birds Epic Nuzlocke. Uh, if you're looking to get an Angry Birds challenges, I would honestly start off with this one, as it's not too difficult, but there is still some strategy you have to plan out throughout the game. Uh, I didn't do it, but if you want to make the challenge more difficult, you can make it a bird nuzlocke where if any class dies, then that bird is locked from being used ever again. Uh, I might even do that long into the future, who knows. But with that being said, that'll be all for the video. As usual, uh, thanks for all the support with Angry Birds Epic videos. Um, I have a bunch planned out in the future that I'm sure you all like. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.